here takes um, also something that's pretty abstract, which is what I think is kind of the general DIY sort of creative energy of Brooklyn. And he's giving it not so much an architectural expression, but sort of an urban expression. He has been the founder of the Brooklyn Flea, the Brooklyn Flea Market um, for the past four years. Uh, before that, he was the communications director or speech writer, uh, depending on how you want to look at it, from Marty Markowitz, the Brooklyn Borough President, who's been mentioned a few times already uh, this evening. Ooh. Wow, we have a hater of Marty Markowitz in the crowd. <laughs> um, that's, that's a nice change. Um, and was also a journalist for The Times and Art Forum and Village Voice, among many others. So Eric Demby, please come over and take it Hi. Um, so I lived in New York for like uh, 21 years, and um, this is the second time I've done one of these, and I always just, uh, just reminds me of how cool New York is. I can get really bored of it here sometimes, and it's very inspiring to watch all these presentations. Um, the, I started the Brooklyn Flea in uh, April of 2008 with my business partner, uh, Jonathan Butler, who has a blog called Brownstoner. We run um, three markets every weekend. Um, one in Fort Greene and two in Williamsburg. They, believe it or not, both attract um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 5, people each every weekend. Um, the reason I believe I was invited here is because we activate public spaces through our large-scale markets. We have like vintage, handmade, and um, food vendors. We have about 150 vendors at our two flea markets. Um, the markets combine a sort of service element with being a tourist attraction, with also being a sort of hipster hangout, and being a sort of global street food bazaar. I, um, I set up my slides in a way where um, I'm not, uh, what I'm going to say doesn't necessarily correlate directly to what's on the screen, I just kind of wanted to talk for a while. Um, and there's a, um, there's a section where there are um, a bunch of before and after photos of the uh, various um, spaces that we have, I guess you could say, transformed. Um, this past weekend, I went to uh, three markets on Saturday. I went to our Smorgasburg Market, I went to the Grand Army Farmers Market, I went to the Fort Greene Flea. Um, I went to hang out with my daughter, but I also was doing shopping. I bought some wedding gifts, I bought some kids' clothes, I bought raspberries, an eggplant, cheese, and a side table. And um, two of those three markets happen to be ones that I run, but the point is that public markets are back in New York City, and they've really only just recently started to grasp the um, public imagination. Those guys are shucking oysters. Um, and I think with this demand, the future of the city will likely bring a much broader influx of um, even more new markets. Um, so in these um, before and after slides, which should start momentarily, um, I wanted to show how we physically transform spaces. That's the Fort Greene market. Um, at really low cost, basically, because our relationships with our landlords are generally temporary. One of our landlords is the Edge. Um, and in fact, in all of our outdoor locations, we don't decorate at all. We don't do any urban design. The sort of the vendors and the people that go there are, and the experience are the sort of design and the window dressing. That's the Williamsburg markets, the same space where the woman who spoke two people before me with her landscape design work. Um, we promote our markets like crazy, we use the vendors as these sort of nodes to reach out to people, and we curate the markets to distinguish them from your sort of typical flea market. Um, I wanted to talk also, because I think it's relevant to the topic, um, that's the market that we did underneath the Brooklyn Bridge at a, form, at a DOT site for one year um, that was really beautiful. Um, Martha Stewart went there, and um, <laughs> among other people. Um, so, in a, in, and that is, I wanted to talk about the economic impact that um, the flea represents because I think it's really significant, and I, I was assuming that some folks here might be interested in hearing about it. Um, in the three and a half years that the flea has been around, I think I, I have found that our business and the vendors who sell there uh, somehow have um, been able to remain somewhat recession proof. Um, the flea acts as a sort of entrepreneurial incubator. We sort of usher these small businesses from what are essentially random dreams when they apply to the market to being full-time jobs for the vendors and then growing businesses. Um, they get this sort of inexpensive retail from us um, and then they, they also, as they grow, they hire locally, they um, basically will procure all their support services almost exclusively locally, they, um, and then the business that the flea runs itself, the, you know, the markets every weekend, um, acts as a sort of, uh, I guess you would call it like a multiplier effect, where the people that go to the flea spill over to the local businesses on the days of the markets, and so the local businesses 
you know, they like the flea because it would bring more people in. And so I think that the way that the flea as an experience as this sort of community building exercise where you can also do commerce with people that sort of look like you or that have some sort of, uh, you know, personal connection to you um, in a way that's almost like, that's a, tra we transformed the uh, former Tower Records annex on Lafayette and 4th Street into our holiday market. So we have this sort of old-fashioned town square vibe at our markets where people come together in this free and open public space, which although we have lots of parks, we don't necessarily have these places where we can necessarily do exactly what we want. That's the Williamsburg Savings Bank where we have um, our winter market. Um, and the next slide maybe coming up is, um, so there's this archway underneath the Manhattan Bridge in Dumbo that the Dumbo Improvement District, which is the local bid, has been trying to transform for, you know, a couple years. And our offices are in Dumbo and we've been trying to figure out what to do with it. And so this Friday, it's the next slide actually, this Friday, um, we're doing an event down there, and so it's a, it's a sort of demapped city street, technically, and so it's very difficult to do events there because of like the street activity permit office. Um, but I think it's interesting where the next phase of the flea, and I think that um, increasingly the next phase of, um, of public markets in the city will start to um, work with, uh, with whether it's streets, like the guy from Jackson Heights, the guy was talking about Jackson Heights earlier, um, was talking about, I think that there's a, um, there's an interesting sort of opportunity in a moment for the flea, there's the archway, um, the flea or other um, businesses to really start to activate public spaces in an even more new way. Now that people are starting to understand how, you know, shopping at public markets um, and connecting with people in this different way that's different than traditional retail or um, sort of like big box stores and that kind of thing, that it also requires a different kind of land use and urban design. Um, and, oh, that's a cool triangle right outside the archway that, where we did a vintage fashion market. And so I think that the, um, I think that uh, the original sort of uh, inspiration for this, for this event was um, that 80% of the land in New York City is, uh, is being used and 20% um, is unused and what will happen to it in the next few years. And I think that, um, I think there's an interesting moment here where New York has gone quite commercial and sort of global in the last, whatever it is, 15, 20 years. And um, I think that the sort of neighborhood forces, the markets like the Flea and other public markets that seem to pop up almost every day, their rise, um, I think, is sort of coinciding with and in a sense sort of competing. There's almost like competing visions right now. And I think that the markets, um, they, you know, they can coexist with the larger stores. Um, but I think that over time we'll see a bit of a return to the sort of traditional way of doing commerce in the city, which I think is um, a great thing that helps, you know, small businesses and a lot of things that... Um, you know, New Yorkers, the kinds of values that a lot of New Yorkers share.